What is up guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, yet again, playing with the fuel system. I've just run off to Bunnings, I've picked up even more nut certs because I've already run out. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna smash out assembling this rear end and getting all the fuel system in at the rear and everything. So at least before it goes off to Troy to get detailed, at least we're gonna have the fuel system in. So yeah, right now I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna, literally we're just gonna get straight into it and just start drilling some holes, putting some rib nuts in, I'm bolting down the floor then the RHS, and then we're going to put the fuel cell on top, and I've got a cool little idea for that too. All right, so what you can see here is I have put some tape down, measured out how far apart I wanna have all of the holes and all the nuts to secure it on the sides. So I'm gonna do that along both sides, uh, just for now. Oh, I might even do across the back and the front in one or two, just to be sure. Um, we'll seam sealer it on the bottom side, so it's not a permanent, it's not permanently in there like if we welded it but uh, it's still gonna be permanent enough that, I don't know, if there's fire or anything, nothing can get through. So, se seam sealer, Sika Flex, um, bolt all this down, and then we'll bolt in the RHS, and then put on the fuel cell on top. nutted all around the sides and everything I would say that this is definitely structural the only annoying thing is is I would have liked to have put two up here but out of rib nuts that little pack that I bought only has so many m6 m6 ones and yet again we're short so I will put those two in at a later date so yeah so that means I'll need to buy quite a few more to be able to do what I want to do next so the RHS uh, which I was calling flat bar in the last video, which you guys uh, happily told me that I was wrong. I knew I was wrong. I just couldn't figure out like I'm bad with uh, with names of things and you guys let me know what it was So that's good. So yeah, so the RHS is will go down roughly about there I've got these really heavy-duty thick rubber mounts that I'll uh, that I'm going to uh, use to to uh, bolt the fuel cell down So these this should be anti-vibration and it should also get the fuel cell up high enough so that the sump isn't touching the bottom, like touching the floor. Alrighty, so it's gonna look something like that, which is good because the sump has a good amount of distance between touching the bottom now. So it's not actually gonna be sitting on here. Got these really heavy duty mounts so that the, the tank's not gonna go anywhere. Now it's gonna actually uh, bolt it all together, but I'm gonna need more nut certs. Cause I'm gonna need some more M6 ones to bolt into the car just here. Cause I want all this to be able to be removable for when down the track, if we plan on tubbing it or anything like that, like it'll be semi-permanent slash removable. Um, and yeah, all of it will be designed so that it can come out if it needs to, if we need to work on the rear end or something, just have that huge extra manhole to be able to get in there. Um, but yeah, so need a lot more rib nuts yet again so that I can bolt this all into place. And then I'm going to use some M8 bolts that'll go all the way through to the bottom where I'll put a nut on and then either tighten them down or I'll even rib nut it to this frame. Um, still just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But yeah, it'll have a long bolt that'll squish down on the rubber mount. All right, so we've got our dash eight, which will run to the front of the car through the pump and figure out where that goes. So it'll come straight from the sump. We'll probably block this this side off because we won't need it like first up. And the good thing is, is if, if we can't supply enough fuel, we just run another line to the front tank. We, it, it won't be an issue from here. This is just storage, and then it supplies the front tank up the front. And I, I doubt it'll be able to drink the front tank before it can, uh, it will need like before it'll be out running the back here. And then in this big boy, we got dash ten, which is our return line. Like I was mentioning in the, I think it was the last video, you can't pressurize the fuel system. So dash eight running to the front. 
Oh, this stuff is annoying. Dash eight running to the front with dash 10 running back. So if, if we find that we're pushing the limits of the return line and we can't return enough fuel, that means that there's not enough fuel in the front, which then means we need to supply more to the front kind of thing. So until this starts running dry and is leaving us in a bit of a pickle, one pump should be more than enough. And we're only expecting, I don't know, maybe around 800 horsepower. If we're expecting 1,000 to 1,500, then it would be a different story. I would of course be looking at uh, a much bigger pump to be supplying the front, but by checking the specs, this little bad boy, the Aeroflow Black Pump, should be more than enough. All right, so now, just for the purpose of being able to possibly see this on the screen, throw the hose back there. Have the dash 10 coming in there. It's not very flexible, so we probably won't do the hose. Well, the, obviously the hose won't be going straight into it, it'll be a, a fitting. But this is obviously what the setup will look like. So we'll probably, depending on if we run both fuel lines together, which is probably gonna be the smartest idea, we'll run the uh, return line, not on this side, it'll be on this side. Um, and then to keep fuel on one side. I'm used to like with car audio and like wiring and things like that. You never run, for instance, a power and a ground on the same side of the car. But obviously with fuel, you want to keep them all together because if you have a rupture on that side and then a rupture on this side, then you've got fuel coming from every direction of the car. It's a lot easier. It's a lot harder to like contain. So keep everything together so that it's all together. So that if in the event of something going wrong, at least it's all in one spot. And I'm also thinking of possibly, I don't know, like dimpling the metal just here. Yeah, so dimpling the metal just here and then putting in like a drain bolt so that if for any chance there is a leak back here, it'll all drain towards this spot. Then you can just pop it out, let it out. Then you don't have to worry about soaking it up or cleaning it up or anything like that. All righty, I think I'm gonna go out and get some more rev nuts so that hopefully by the end of this video, we can have the uh, fuel cell actually mounted and ready to go. Then we can start planning out the system, get the fittings, get everything going. Alrighty, so update. I've got, um, not a, uh, I can't remember where we were when we finished up, but that bottom plate, the floor, all done, all uh, bolted in around the sides. Now I've got the RHS drilled and bolted into the body of the car. Now on the back here, I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do so I could make it so that you could still get access to, to the bolts that were in there. And what I ended up using was just using a hole saw so that, because I wanted to make it so that you could still fit uh, like a rattle gun in there if you needed to get down into there to access it So yeah, use the whole saw just to cut it a bit bigger so that you've got a big open area You can see it a bit easier on that one so you can still get to the nut really easy. We'll get to the bolt And then it all comes out and then also the bits the offcuts from this uh, from the RHS Fit perfectly under there just snug enough that you kind of just have to force it in there and then makes this solid makes this solid and then like you can literally here I'll put it on a tripod so I can show you so now you can literally from these bars move the entire car and you can like lift on them completely solid back here now all right so what I've got here is the rubber feet I've just cut the top off of them so they're actually flat on top and then I also had to drill out the center so that the bolt can go through so now the bolt kind of you have to force it through, not force it through, but it's a really snug fit. So I feel like that'd be really good for keeping the tensile strength across this distance. So now that you just need to drill holes in the RHS so I can push the bolt through and then the tank will be secured. And then everything will be mounted for the back here, except for the fuel pump, which again, uh, once we've confirmed which way we're going with uh, the fuel lines, I can dictate, like, dictate then where the fuel pump will go. Then we can mount that and start doing lines. So I'm gonna drill these holes out real quick now and uh, then we'll all be mounted. Sweet. All right, this is where I'm gonna have to call it quits for today. I've only got these two front bolts in. I didn't get to doing the back ones because you still gotta do a little bit of modification and my cheap $100 drill batteries just died and I won't have time to charge it before I have to upload this video. So, call it quits here today. I've got almost everything mounted. I'll do a quick clean up and then we'll go over it. All righty, so we've got our feet um, heavy duty rubber feet, they, they should be perfect to hold it and once I actually do those bolts up tight and it'll actually be kind of pressing down on the on the rubber, should be mint. We've still got our clearance room under here. Um, pump, I'm, I'm thinking the pump's gonna go on that side, not sure yet, but everything's come out pretty good today. I'm pretty happy with, uh, with today's efforts. The tank is more or less mounted and uh, we're ready to start making things look a bit pretty. Although I, I won't actually start painting stuff until 
everything is finalized and locked in. Oh, but I am very happy with where this is ending today. Alrighty, that is where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Um, just let you guys know, at the moment, if you want to grab some merch, jump on the website. We're having a massive sale right now. Make sure you get in there quick, because it will sell out. Only a couple items left, so we may as well discount them, but just get them all out. We do have a lot more merch on its way. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Uh, I'm extremely satisfied with where we're ending up today and how far, how much work we've gotten done. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. So catch you guys in the next one, which will be, hey, what day is today? Is today Monday? Yeah, I think today's Monday. So I'll catch you guys in the next one, which will be Wednesday at 6 p.m. Be there or be square. Alrighty, guys. Peace.